It was a pretty severe snowstorm. I'm no scaredy cat, but I'm only 23, and I value my life after all. I was in the middle of the woods, in a log cabin I'd rented for the month. It's about one and a half miles from the nearest ranger station. Now, it was a pretty thick part of the woods. One of those parts where the trees blocked out the sun. My cabin was in a little clearing where there was about a six meter gap between the cabin and the edge of the woods so I could see if anything came out of the woods from the few windows that the cabin had. Anyway, it was a huge snowstorm. The biggest one of the year, which luckily wasn't too big, because snowstorms didn't get too big in the area, but it was certainly big enough to scare children and block out your vision for a few meters ahead of you. So you can imagine, I was bundled up in bed, looking out the window at the clearing, and I swear to God, if anything had come out of those trees, I would have seen it, which is why I was very unnerved when I heard, tip tap tip tap. It was light and coming from a room over but just loud enough for me to hear it in the raging snowstorm. I started getting all worked up at what might be out there until I finally came to my senses. I'm a grown man and this is stupid. It's probably just some tree branch scratching at the window in all the wind. After a while I calmed down and somehow managed to get some sleep in all the commotion of the storm. The following day, the snowstorm was still going, just like the weatherman predicted, but I had died down enough so I could snag some foxes which were out trying to survive in the harsh winter, hunting little rabbits and what not. I put on my big coat and grabbed my scoped Remington rifle and trudged out to the forest. Now, if you recall that the trees block out the sky, well good, because the trees took a lot of the snow, so the ground wasn't completely covered in it, but I can tell you, I was freezing my ass off. I walked about 200 meters from the house, when I saw something in the distance darting about. Yes, I thought, as I quickly, but quietly, approached it. When I got there, it was gone. Damn, I let it get away. I had to get at least one good kill before the storm picked up again. Then, I saw a shadowy figure darting around in the bush. It was large and walked on all fours, but it didn't look like some normal animal. It looked... It looked nearly humanoid but not enough so that I didn't consider shooting whatever it was. On one hand, it might be some wild human that needed help. On the other hand, it might be a new species and I could become famous if I killed it. On the other hand, maybe, I would shoot it, but it wouldn't die because my rifle wasn't normally used for big game. It was just a beginner rifle, and if I shot it, then it just might get angry. I then did something stupid. I yelled out, Hello? I I is anyone there? It cocked up its head and stood deadly still, and it was poised to jump at me. And just as it was probably going to attack me, I cocked my gun and let off a warning shot. It scattered, running faster than I think I've ever seen anything run out there. I doubled out of there and back to my cabin. That night, the storm was angry at something. I'm not sure what. Guess what came from the window a room away? Tip tap. Tip tap. But this time, it was louder. And it wasn't something just tapping against the window. It was a voice. It was inhuman and demonic, as if ripped straight from the depths of hell. And this time, I knew whatever it was I nearly shot out there wasn't too happy about my decisions. I told myself it was okay, and promised the following day I would get in my truck and get the hell out of that godforsaken place. But then something happened, something I will remember to this very day 
as being possibly the most terrifying moment of my life. I didn't lock the windows. Then the window slid up slowly, as if purposely trying to give me a heart attack. I grabbed the radio next to my bed and called the ranger station. Hello? The person on the other end said. Listen, there's something that has just entered my cabin, and I have reason to believe, whatever it is, it wants to kill me. The ranger replied with, Holy shit, not again. I, I can't believe it. Uh, uh, do you have a gun? Yes, I replied as the ranger continued. Make as much noise as you can and shoot anything that moves, okay? Hold out as long as you can. We will send someone out there right away, but it will take about half an hour for them to get there in this weather, so do whatever you can to stay alive. The lion went dead. He was speaking as if he knew what was going on. Was there something more that they knew about my situation? Have, have people died in this cabin? Oh God, oh God, I'm gonna die. But I couldn't think about that right now. There was something in there with me. I knew that either I was going to attack it, or it was going to attack me. So I grabbed my rifle, put on some thick clothes, and walked out the door, instantly firing around from my rifle. Then I heard something moving around, making a mess in the next room. Apparently, now knowing I was in there, an armed. Then something broke the door down. I instantly shot at it, but it was so fast and so strong. It was making its way towards me, darting about so I couldn't hit it. I knew I was going to have to go one-on-one -on -one with that thing, whether I liked it or not. I remembered the knife I had concealed in my sock. I always kept there in case I was attacked by some huge animal and I ripped it out of there, cutting my leg. But that didn't matter. I had my own life to think about. As it jumped on me, I stabbed it with what would have been a fatal blow had it not moved in reflex and the knife went straight through its thin yet amazingly strong arm. And I heard a dunk as his hand hit the wood. The thing hissed with the anger of a thousand angry demons as it ran out the window, bleeding out a black substance I suppose was its blood. I rushed to shut and lock all the windows. The rangers came in with an enormous range of arms, apparently very frightened, and they got me out of there as soon as possible, escorting me to my parents' home in their truck. One of them looked at me. We have a few things to tell you, he said sadly. Only one person stayed in that cabin, he continued. No one ever found the body, he whispered. There was a long silence. No one knows what that thing is. They did a search of the woods a while back in the chopper. After the resident of the cabin went missing, they, they never found anything. But they found it, uh, its nest? Oh, I said. Turns out the, de the demented thing had a habit of stewing up its prey about its residence, mostly small animals. But you imagine it gets excited when a human comes to stay. Oh God, I whispered. I almost became a Christmas decoration. Yep, the ranger said. You were so lucky to survive. We were grim, but we started to laugh. I just survived becoming a damned Christmas decoration. No reason to stay depressed about something I survived. I uttered through a weak laugh. The following day, the media was all over it. There were hunters with years of experience, all going after this elusive inner lover, as the media dubbed it. Weak. That cabin was knocked down to reveal an entire tunnel system waiting to be explored. 
With ultimate caution, the military were assigned to exploring those tunnels. They never found the thing, but they did find countless banks of organs and blood from the sick addiction this thing had. There were tunnels that lead to towns and cities. Some people say that the thing escaped through one of the tunnels across the sea. Others say it died deep in the tunnels of blood loss. But I know that thing is alive and at large. The reason I know this was because I now live in a house with my family almost 14 years later. Sometimes, when there's a huge snowstorm, big enough to block out your sight for a few meters ahead, big enough to scare the life out of children, I know that that thing wants revenge because I have a window next to my bed. Tip tap. Tip tap.